So in the last video, we introduced this idea of transitions into a continuum state, where we introduced uh, the density of states, a quantity that tells us uh, the number of states per unit energy as a way of describing this continuum. And uh, we arrived at the following expression for calculating transitions from a discrete initial state onto a continuum where we have to sum over all of the possible final states. This sum is most efficiently computed as the following integral. And we're going to apply this idea to our result for a harmonic perturbation for which we found that the probability of transitioning between two discrete states was given by the following expression. Here, uh, we've added the plus or minus taking into account both uh, the process of stimulated emission for the positive uh, for the plus and the concept of, or the process of absorption for the negative. So plugging this into our formula. So the point of all this is to give us a net probability of transition. You have to take into account all possible, uh, all the possibilities that we can transition to. So that's why we're summing over all of the states. And here I've dropped the, the TF. Uh, we normally apply the perturbation up until some time TF. I've dropped that and uh, this T now stands for the duration of the perturbation. So this results in the following expression. Right. Now, this looks like a fairly complicated integral to do. Um, in general, we can't say that uh, this perturbation matrix element doesn't depend on the final energy. Likewise, all of these terms depend on the final energy. So it looks like we've hit a dead end, but uh, we can actually get a little bit further. And to see that, I'm going to re-express this quantity in terms of energy differences. So we had delta E, it now stands as a stand-in for omega uh, Fi. And I've absorbed this uh, h bar squared into this, these brackets, uh, plus or minus h bar omega sine squared omega fi plus or minus omega t over two times our density of states integrated over the energies of our continuum. And this will be delta EFI. So here, delta EFI is just the energy difference between our final state, which we're taking to be discrete because we're eventually going to sum over the continuum minus the energy of our initial state. And the key here is this term over here will suppress any values of this integrant that uh, for which the energy difference is very large. So this uh, so this term suppresses the integrant so that in reality, we actually don't have to uh, integrate over very many states. So only a narrow band of energies uh, will contribute to the integral. 
Okay, because if this quantity is too large, this integral will essentially be equal to zero. And it doesn't contribute very much. In that case, so within this narrow band, we can say that uh, this matrix element doesn't vary very much. So it's we can take it to be about uh, a constant. And we can also approximate the density of states as being roughly constant within this band. This was like looking at a very small interval, even though these two quantities may vary over a large pan of energies, we're looking at such a narrow band that we're approximating these as constants. In that case, our new expression for the net probability of transition can be written as follows. So now we can take these quantities that we're approximating as constants out of the integral. I'll restore the h bar square so that it's all as a function of frequencies. You can also take out the density of states and we're left with integrating uh, this sync function. over the energies. Here, the omega fi's are implicitly functions of energy. Okay, so if you're looking for the energy dependence of this integrand, they're implicitly in these two terms, the omega fi's. Here, we're integrating over a narrow band of energies. Now, to deal with this integral, we can look at how the integrand itself behaves as a function of energy. So this is uh, a sync function, which we've seen the graph of before. It goes something like that. This is now as a function of energy, which implicitly we can um, we can describe by the uh, omega fi's. We saw before that the width of this middle peak is two pi t minus two pi t. And an important property of the sync function is that uh, about 90% of the area under this entire curve is within the central peak. Additionally, if we apply the perturbation for long enough, so remember this T is quantifying how long we're applying the perturbation for, this peak will get narrower and narrower. Here, it's important to keep in mind that there's a limit to how much we can increase T by. We, need to, we can only increase it so much that the probability of transition remains small. So that perturbation theory remains valid. Uh, so, but we don't wanna apply it for such a short time that uh, the central peak is uh, too broad. In any case, under this limit of having uh, long enough times that perturbation theory is valid and that this peak is very narrow, 90% of the value of this integral essentially will be over a very narrow range of, uh, of frequencies or of energies. So in this limit, most of the integral is within a small interval. 
So what we can, what that means is rather than integrating over a finite uh, domain, we're, go we're going to extend the integrals from minus infinity to plus infinity because the contributions outside of this peak will be negligibly small uh, in this limit of a large T. So in that case, or the sum or the net probability to transition to a continuum of states will be as follows. So now the integral extends from minus infinity to infinity of our sinc function. Uh, so uh, integral with respect to the energy. And this is an integral that we can now perform. Uh, I won't do it explicitly here, but it has a value of h bar t over two pi. Okay, this uh, simplifies a little bit further into two pi over h bar, or density of states of the final energy. Uh, or matrix element squared times T. So this expression over here, we can call uh, the net probability to transition. And what's nice about this is uh, we clearly have a rate of transition here uh, per unit time, because the longer we apply the perturbation for, the more probability we have of making a transition. So this lets us define a quantity known as the rate of transmission, which is the probability per unit time of transitioning. We'll call that R. This, you can think of it as the derivative of the probability of transmission with respect to time. It's given by this. this is uh, this occurs for perturbations that are uh, different than harmonic perturbations. It's more general than that. And it's known as Fermi's golden rule. The important quantities here are that it depends on the square modulus of the perturbation and uh, depends linearly on the density of states. And this is uh, often used in these types of problems where you want to calculate, for example, ionization or uh, scattering uh, properties of physical systems. <laughs>